Hey everybody and welcome to the second episode of the Inline 6 Supercar series. This time we will build a car in 1955 and try to break 294 km per hour for the fast world record breaking car and 246 km per hour for the more budget version of the car. In the very beginning I chose a body and tried to make it a little bit beautiful and only to then notice that it doesn't fit a big enough inline 6 engine. So all of the work you are seeing now is basically done for nothing as we will lose all the fixtures with a new body. In the future we will first check out if the engine bay is big enough and then choose a body. So yeah, now the design is finished. Um, let's check out the engine size. Oh well, 4 liters doesn't even fit 4 liters, so it's not the correct body. Uh, we choose the same body we used in 1946 and yeah, we take the desirability penalty that comes with it because it's too old, but well, at least it fits the engine. Our first try will have an engine capacity of 4.6 liters and a rough power output of almost 300 horsepower. As you see, the um, estimated top speed is uh, high enough, but yeah, we don't have any grills in it, so let's f finish the design first. The visual design is very similar to the first car, just without any pop-up headlamps. And yeah, basically more generic design. So in the end when it's done, we will immediately see that the top speed is not high enough anymore. So we will have to retune the engine or spend a lot of quality on the aero department. Now we're basically done with the design and yeah, let's check out the top speed. 273, very very bad. But yeah, let's finish the far car first to actually get the real numbers instead of the estimation. Stats wise the car is pretty good, selling good in the GT and sports market. This, this is where the money is for us, but yeah, we will still need to try to get more speed out of it. I'm fiddling around with the suspension a little bit to make it more drivable and more capable for the mass market and then we will retune the engine. We are now above 300 horsepower, but still lacking top speed as we are at 287. Uh, 3 speed gearbox is definitely enough because we have so much wheel spin if we choose 4 gears. Let's make it a little bit more simple and a little bit more drivable. And yeah, still not where we want to be, 289. So where do we spend more money? The top end. It's always a good idea to make more power, especially with large bore engines. And now we're almost there, 293. Get a little bit more out of it, and yes, basically now we have it. Just some small adjustments, and then this car is ready to go. So yeah, now it's really really good in light sports and super car market. This should bring in a little bit of money. Then we clone the car and build our cheaper version of it. As I said, the slower ones uh, on only need to go 246 km per hour, so we can, sp uh, we can save a lot of money uh, in the quality of the top end and try to make it a little bit more sensible. As it has less power we can choose a little bit more gears, make it more economical in the various speed ranges and as you see we are above 50 drivability in 1955. This is really really good for a sports car and yeah we are catering a lot of uh, different markets especially the family sports market which is a good one in uh, Fruinia. Let's, I'm still making it a little bit cheaper, a little bit more powerful and 
Uh, the RE-229 still need a little bit more power. I'm trying to um, cool the car as much as it needs to be cooled so that we have a good reliability at least for the mass produced car. Um, this is something which maybe will not work in the end of the game anymore because we are very limited with the inline 6 approach and we cannot make that much power so we maybe have to cheat a little bit and undercool and take the reliability penalties. But yeah, this is it. This is our car um, for the mass market and hopefully we will make a lot of money with it. Um, we add the same engineers we had before to lower the engineering times. We are at three years and nine months, which is somewhat reasonable. Or I adjusted to four years almost. And then um, we actually take the, to the same um, factories as we had before um, a small level 3 for the car and a small level 2 for the engines, making about 30 cars per day. So then we adjust the production volume of each car. Uh, we of course don't build as many world record breaking cars and more of the cheap cars. Our world record breaker can uh, use a lot of markup and will bring 1.6 million per month and the other one 3.6 million. And it will be prof profitable within a few years, one or two years after its release. But until then we are still selling the old car, uh, which still makes a little bit of profit. We are down to 30% of markup for the world record car and 5% for the cheap car. So definitely not very profitable anymore. But yeah, we take what we can get and hopefully our next car is ready soon. Still decreasing the markups 1% for the cheap car. Better than nothing. And yeah, let's take a look if we can see how the economy evolves. Our profits are slightly rising, probably because we get some more market awareness. We lost some money this year, so that's mainly because of the development of the new car. So, as the time goes by, our performance gets worse and worse. We're losing 20 million per year. Um, and now we, as we basically cannot use any markup anymore, we reduce the production volume to get to a sensible markup and yeah, we will wait for the next half a year to get the car out of business. So now we are almost out of money, but yeah, our car, our next car is ready and we can start to sell it. As we just saw, the economy actually wasn't really that bad, but our car was, and yeah, we just didn't sell anymore because so much new tech went into the into new competitors. The new car makes a decent profit at more than four million already. Now we are already have five million, so this is really looking good. The markets are growing a lot, and yeah, it seems like we launch the car right into a boom phase. I usually try to um, adjust it that, the, um, that we have 20%, 10 to 20% over production so that we don't have to adjust each month if we build up more market awareness and so we just have a slight stock we can use for the rest of the year. And we also uh, now can enter the market in Ahana and we are selling 15 of the cheap cars there per month. That's probably because of the fuel type we chose. We didn't pay attention and uh, the fuel type probably has a very low availability in Ahana. So we earned more than 40 million last year. The economy is we are getting a little bit worse, but still we're making good money and we are only two years away from designing the next model. So still sitting at three and a half million 
profit per month. We, are, we are now have more money than in the beginning of the game. Earning another 33 million last year. So overall our factories have been paid off and now we have a lot more money to spend on new cars. So as we approach the end of this episode things are looking decent so to say. Um, yeah, we are looking forward to the next car. Hopefully we will reach even more people selling our inline-six supercars. See you all next time.